and it's red and pretty sure it's the red dot is it recording are you sure it's recording i'm pretty sure it's recording. either way we have to uh we, we have to just kind of double check it once in a while you know every, i guess every section of the uh, video we're gonna be doing just kind of like look at that uh bottom right corner of our screen not your screen making sure that's still recording so. yeah because last week we had a little snafu uh we were recording for what 30 minutes without why do i get a feeling that you realizing we're stopped not recording. the recording on purpose why because i want to talk to you all day <laughs> please you you think you too highly of yourself you you, you want to repeat everything that we said that we talked about i rather have a conversation with my dog than talk to you you mean marshmallow yeah my marshmallow dog you mean your dog that, who ruins your bed sheet yeah but at least he doesn't hurt my feelings <laughs> <laughs> no, i'm just kidding happy well, friday good morning everybody afternoon or night whenever you watch it today is october 22 or 22nd mm -hmm. people 22nd say, i don't know do you like saying 22 or 22nd you say I guess it depends on how you say how it. How you say like cardinal? I prefer saying 10, 22. 10, 22, 21. Oh my gosh. How about like 10, the 22nd? <laughs> no, I don't think no one's, don't say, the please don't say of 10, what, the 22nd. Of, of 2021. The year of our Lord. You got that part. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Just, oh make, just, just make it as complicated as possible. 80. How about 80? What, what's, what's, how do you say 80 again? Uh, Anno Domini. Anno Domini. Anno means year, and Domini, I think, is God, like year of the Lord. Or oh, yeah, because the Spanish of year is Año, with little yeah, Y, I guess. Yeah. Okay. So that's besides the point. We are getting closer and closer to Halloween. As we get closer to Halloween, we are drifting away from the topic. <laughs> yes, we are. And we're going to continue that topic on today's observance. And the first observance is International Caps Lock Day. No way. There, there is an observance for that. Yeah, well, I observe it every day because every time I text you or text anyone, mm -hmm. it's always what? In all caps. Yeah. Because you know why? Because I like to yell in my text. That's kind of like the connotation of it. Like if you put everything in it's, it's like uppercase, it's all like caps. Loud, right? Yeah. It, it, it conveys a sense of you yelling. Mm -hmm. And it sometimes comes off like uh, abrasive. Like, like I'll send you a text that's like all in caps, right? You're like, whoa, calm down. I'm like, wait, wait, sorry, my caps off is on. Uh, I was gonna say, uh, uh, I don't like it when I use like smartphone or keyboard when I type, right? Mm. But if I, uh, like when I write, I write all capital letters. Yeah. I got it's used called, to that. It's called block. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's called block writing because uh, it's more visible. Yes, there's yes. more, there's more distinction, and I'm not really good at cursive. I'm, I'm, I mean, I, I can do it, but it, yeah. You know. you're, you're, the thing is, you're a very nice person. I never seen you curse at all. No. <laughs> See, I got him. It, oh come on. <laughs> yeah, but what I'm saying is, like, I can do the, uh, the, the cursive yes. style of writing, but it's but... really hard to read sometimes because the, yes. the letters emerge together, and you can't really go wrong with caps lock. Oh, don't even get me started with like doctor prescription writing. Yeah, exactly. I, mean, like, what? I know what you're saying. Yeah. Like what? Like. <laughs> so, I work with. I used to work with a bunch of doctors. Well, I used to work with my brothers too, right? And I read a bunch of their prescription, right? How come the writing looks like those, those uh, beeping machine? Yes, I know the, the ECI. Yeah. The EKG. How come? Why? Why? So the thing is, I like, guess, uh, over time working in the pharmaceutical uh, field, right? You learn to recognize some of the first few letters and you just know what the, the medication is. So, okay, like let's say if you're a pharmacist or a pharmacy tech, yes. you get used to the way they write because you also know like what the medication will be prescribed. Yes, so usually when we do that, mm -hmm. right, it's usually a refill. So we know what a medication already is mm -hmm. and we use okay. reference to the other writing. So when I see a huge L, then followed by an I, right? And I know this person has hypertension, right? It's like, oh, okay, it's lisinopril. Or this person is a huge squiggly line, right? It's just like a huge M and a bunch of lines afterwards. Mm -hmm. If you know that person had diabetes, right? And you check their patient profile, you realize, okay, they're taking metformin for, oh, okay. for diabetes. So it's basically like you have to do a little bit of guesswork to it. Oh, that's going to be... I know it's a little bit, uh, a little bit challenging. I, exactly, you know? it's a little bit guesswork, but after you get, but wrong, you confirm it with the doctor, yeah, exactly. anyways, you right? Confirm okay, it with the doctor. Yeah, yeah, if okay. you cannot read it, you have to confirm because you can't, you can't be giving out medication that is not, and for its intended uh, person who takes it. You know what? I'm gonna make it a life goal mm -hmm. to become a doctor, mm -hmm. and then I would be the first doctor to prescribe 
or to give prescriptions on a readable format. Uh, I'm gonna use my writing. Uh, you're not the first though. Because we do get it through digitally and it's uh, through typeface. So oh, man. We, we, we can read it easily. It's just the, the old school, the traditional doctor just write mm -hmm. on the, the prescription pad that's a little bit difficult. All right, well, thank you, Joe, for saving my time. I'm not gonna be a doctor anymore. Uh, you, but <laughs> you, that doesn't stop your dream. No, you can, no, no, no. You can I, no you I'll can use that one as an excuse no, no, so I don't have no, to no, become can, a doctor. You can, you can still <laughs> chase your dream. No, I've seen people who go to school at 50 and they still become doctors. It takes like five years somewhere. You can be a doctor. Oh, man. So today is International Caps Lock Day. Uh, what did we have other days? about prescriptions? Because we were talking about the legibility. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. Because like Caps Lock just makes it easier to uh, mm -hmm. read. And when I do my slides for you guys to read, I usually put in Caps Lock so it would be easier to see through. Right. Zoom, mm -hmm. right? Because I know you guys are looking at a small tablet, right? If the word's a little bit bigger, it's more mm -hmm. uh, readable, legible. Oh, uh, that's International Caps Lock Day. After that day, make sure to turn off the caps lock. It's oh, well, before some you, people, yeah, some people yeah before you move on to the next observance, we have a perfect example of this, which yes. is your title right there. Exactly, it's in caps lock. Yeah. All right. Uh, moving on, we have Eat a Pretzel Day. Hey, look at that face. It looks smiley. I was looking at, oh, all, yeah. the, I was looking at the pretzel and they're all smiling. But what is... Um, this one looks like a very big pretzel. Like, it I is. mean, it's a person's hand yeah. right there. How do you like your pretzel? You like it hard or soft? Oh, I like it soft. I like, I like it, soft. it soft, yeah. Do you like it uh, cheese filled, hot dog filled, or just plain old? I can pretzel? do hot dog and cheese. I can do plain too. It, it, you know, because when I eat a pretzel, uh -huh. I also wanted to eat it with a dip. Yes. What's your favorite dip to use? Uh, cheese. Really? I guess yeah. I like mustard. Okay. Yeah, mustard. Just mustard? Not honey mustard. Uh, I can do both, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm, uh, I, yeah, I, I prefer honey mustard than just regular mustard. Just I maybe catch it when there's a hot dog inside. You ever been to like wetzel pretzel? Oh yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. they usually combine it with what? Uh, lemonade? Yes. Yeah. The anti uh, anti anti ants anti ants. I thought you say I thought you say antioxidants. Uh, no no. no. <laughs> I, 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 I anti ants. Like, okay yeah anti ants. Uh, that's another pretzel place. Mm -hmm. uh, fun fact: I worked there. Oh, you did? Yeah, for just two weeks. Oh, what happened? Well, uh, I guess you could say I, I was really good at making pretzel. So <laughs> I like, mean, you look at you get twisted, right? It mm -hmm. takes a little bit. Of no, time. I was able to do that. The problem is, I think they are very uh, uh, not strict. They're very specific on how much dough you would use in a pretzel and all. Oh, you're using too much dough. Uh, hey, yeah. dude, if, if if you were working there still, I was like, okay, I gotta go buy pretzel when Jared's working because he really packs the dough. <laughs> See, but I, I understand from where you're coming from. It's funny because. Um, I, I always forget that it, it rises, you know, when you bake it. Yeah, you it, know? It, it increases in size and you don't expect it. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, I don't blame you at all. But like, when would you eat pretzel? I, you probably see at the fair mm -hmm. or movie theater. I think movie theater is Definitely in the mall. Carnivals, mall. Just want to yeah, grab mall. a quick bite, you know. Mm. And then there's another one like the pretzel nuggets. If you don't want to deal with the, with yes, the big but this, pretzel like this. Those are like chips a little bit harder, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So I kind of like it because they have you like, what? Three handles. You have one, two, three. You hold it, you eat it. You break it. You share it. Can be a weapon too, you know, for self defense. Yeah. You're saying, yeah. eat pretzel day on caps. Eat a pretzel day, yeah, for but, today. You know, can can this be a breakfast food? This could be a breakfast food, right? I mean, anything can be a breakfast food. That's right. That's right. You're right, but it's just more like when you go to a restaurant, they have a more specific guideline. What is breakfast food? Oh. I forgot to mention or I forgot to discuss this about pretzel is that when we were growing up in the Philippines, right. pretzel is like tied to something sweet like chocolate coated pretzel. That's the most oh, common yes, pretzel yeah. we had. There's, there's and, dessert then, pretzel, yes. and then I came here and tried the, the original or I guess the regular pretzel. It's salty. Took a bite and I'm like, what is this? Why is this salty? Yeah. And that's when I learned that pretzels are uh, not always sweet, not always chocolate coated. You guys eat a lot of sweet stuff. You know? Oh, yes. Yes, definitely. You know, besides the little uh, twist that you see in Pesto right there, it's petrol sticks. Mm, that's another one. Yes, yes. It's just uh -huh. a stick, kind of like a, a fry, french fry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, it's on all caps because today is international. Caps lock day and we're going to go for emphasis. And this is for most emphasis that I want to tell to you guys is clean up the earth day. Time to get your vacuum, your broom and start Vacuuming the river is that is that what you're trying to say here? Or? No, please don't use oh. a vacuum okay. <laughs> on the river because you have no electrical outlet. So you're gonna bring a power generator. And no, bring... you get a battery. My vacuum's like it has a battery. 
Yeah, but how are you going to clean a river with that small little I handheld know. vacuum? Maybe a Dyson vacuum. Maybe a different type of cleaning, that's for sure. Yes, well, the thing is, if you cannot clean the earth, when well, you can, right? You can reduce the littering. There you go. You yourself can reduce uh, your impact on the earth, your carbon footprint, by mining your litter. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be someone else today, right now. What? But Joe, why do we have to clean the earth? Well, the thing is, we... The earth is not ours, really. Not just ours. Yeah, uh, we're sharing it. We're sharing it. With a bunch of neighbors, and it could be neighbors of all kind. It could be another human or a bunch of animals that have been here for like thousands of years, way before we did. Mm -hmm. And they live harmoniously in the land that they live in, and... We, it's kind of selfish for us to create something. Exactly. And I mean, uh, just like what Joe said, uh, the earth is just not ours. Just think about it. Let, let's say a, a dorm. Yes. Or a, a house and you're a renting with... A communal with... shared place. Yeah, there you go. And, you know, uh, yeah, you can be cleaning your room, but if you're going to be messy with the, you know, in the whole house, yes. then your other housemates will be annoyed. Like, hey, like this. Wait. you let me borrow something of yours and I return it into a damaged... Uh, Damage you don't like, you won't Would like you like that? that? No. no. I'll be like, wow, Joe, I, I appreciate not... you breaking my Nintendo Switch OLED, which I I got, uh, you know, I had a hard time getting it. You know, I had to travel to Seven Seas and Seven Mountains just to get it. Uh... He's been talking about that for like for <laughs> three weeks now. I'm getting very caps locked. <laughs> very caps locked or very... <laughs> I was gonna say jealous. <laughs> I'm not jealous. Yeah, I can literally jealous. go buy it right now, but I don't need to. No, because, because I want to use my money to clean up the earth. Oh, okay. All right. Yes, I want to buy products. Digital candy. money, digital cash. Yes, exactly. So you have to like uh, get more cotton to make more dollar bills, mm -hmm. or dig up the earth for more precious metals so you can make coins and stuff like that. You gotta find ways to reduce your carbon footprint. Uh, use uh, use materials that you can be easily recyclable, and their packaging. Most importantly, is packaging mm -hmm. where it's biodegradable. So you can, if you do litter it, or just just for chance that you forgot about it, it can take over time. It can uh, degrade, mm -hmm. and break down. And yeah, that's the term a, breakdown right there. Yeah, biodegradable, right? And one mm -hmm. thing, the one gripe that I do have with some uh, commercial industry is mm -hmm. the excessive packaging. That's true. Like when you see like fruits, like bananas, you see bananas, they have like individual package. I'm like, why do you do that? Mm -hmm. Like bananas have its own organic package already, right? So we have to find ways to reduce consumption. And well, I mean, to be fair, overall, yeah, we're always talking about like these companies doing bad things and all. But uh, some companies, I? however, yes. are, are actually trying to pursue uh how do you say it like the, the a cleaner, more group, a cleaner, cleaner, greener approach. Yeah. yeah. But the thing is, it's not enough. Well, yes, this is the thing. It's not enough. We but need all to work together. The, yeah, since you brought that up, I was going to also say that uh, sometimes you as an individual would think something like that, like something similar, like, all right, I'm not going to litter, but I'm only one out of 8 billion no, people. But so what kind of change will I make? Uh, that's true. In a larger scale, it's not. But it does still help. I mean, it's, you know, it's not totally 0%. Right. Uh, the very small percent that is there it's still there. It's still there. Yeah. So. Even though you think your impact is uh, minimal, right? Mm -hmm. A little in the grand scheme of things, it does make an impact. It's and guess like, what? Yes. If everyone thinks the same thing or, you know, the, the same idea, then nobody's even going to initiate right. uh, the change. You know, a wave, a huge wave can break a rock, but a single drop over time can break a rock. Exactly. So yeah. even though we're a single drop, right? We are consistent in our methods, right? And mm -hmm. inspire other people to follow in our ways of cleaning the earth right it'll be done in a gif like that the most common uh waste that is really giving us trouble are the plastics yes the plastic you know? is a little bit difficult yes because like it takes yeah. hundreds of years if thousands. not many thousands you know before it breaks down so there are technologies <laughs> where they try to create like bacteria that are able to eat plastic and uh, digest it mm -hmm. but that's just a band-aid to a big wound it's a patch yeah it's uh -huh. a patch. So that is Clean Up the Earth Day. Do your part and inspire people to continue cleaning the earth or, you know, get on the path of cleaning the earth. It's a good habit. I've always asked myself this, how come we don't throw our garbage to a volcano? 
and then I tried searching a video about that on YouTube. Surprisingly, there's someone who actually explained why. It's just not cost effective. Exactly, because you yeah. have to drive all that much. Uh, well, you stuff. have to fly. Yeah, you have to go <laughs> so, yeah, but I mean, it, if it's possible, you could have just, you know, it's. You, what the thing is, like, you had to take the path of least resistance. And like you said, volcano is a little hard, uh, hard to do. The easy thing is just put in the right and it's not available bit. everywhere pretty much yeah. it's not, not all countries have their volcano i don't right? think california has a volcano no, no I so. so you have to go to a different state yeah probably washington got yeah, no we have the beaches no that's bad cause, <laughs> i know cause i know there's, right there's a huge garbage barge the, the, the yeah the garbage patch that yeah. is so crazy when i learned about that it's just ugh. so i can't believe how much trash yeah, we're i know accumulating you know today in history i did yell it out because it went all you know, it looks like all your texts are all caps. Well, it is International Catalog Day. And in uh -huh. 1976, FDA, the Food and Drug Administration, banned red dye number four after Ooh. it was discovered to cause bladder cancer in dogs. Oh, no. So back then, red dye number four was the preferred dye to use in food, uh, cosmetics. Um, Wait, stuff food for humans? Yes, food for humans. Okay. So... You got cool, uh, cool drinks or fruit drinks. I have that little color to it. You use red dye number four. Oh. But then some dogs, you know, drank some and it causes a oh, lot wow. of cancer in dogs. So they had to ban it. And this is crazy and amazing at the same time because something specific or something that happened to a specific species that of from. animal was yes. found out, but it's more of a. A uh, human thing. Yes. No, no, I'm, I'm talking about the red diet. It's more of a human like humans thing, yes. mostly um, created it, consume and use it. it and consume it. Yeah. So wow. after, after it was banned, right? It was still used in cosmetic for uh, what do you call it? Non, Hair dye. non edible food. Oh, okay. Product for makeup, lipstick. So they can be used for that, right? Then you realize maybe we shouldn't use that at all. Okay. Because if it can cause this for dogs, sometimes it might cause it for humans. Mm -hmm. So they don't want to take the risk for it. And that's why we have these. Uh, government bodies that will oversee these chemicals that might cause harm yeah right well the research is done by a, a scientific organization exactly. right? and then you the have, government you you would just ban applies it a policy you have to out have of it. Uh, you have to have like a bunch of scientific research to back it up yes so yeah that's why you know you should not allow it. and that is how science is I mean you know we learn from something and then we improve yes by trial yeah trial and error all right and on October 22nd we have Jeff Goldblum, he is an actor, American actor, uh, born Jurassic Park, in right? Homestead, Pennsylvania, yes. And then he's also on Thor, the... Oh, you guys hear, heard that? Yes. That's a doorbell. Yes, he was in Thor, and what else? He was in Jurassic Park, like I forgot said. his character in Thor, uh, Ragnarok. He was in some he's, kind of space. But wait, he's funny. And he, he's got the uh, commercial, the apartment's commercial. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I, I don't have TV, so I don't know. So <laughs> you have uh, Jurassic World. You have Independence Day. He was oh yeah, in... I forgot Independence Day with Will Smith. I forgot the one where he was a fly. Where he, he was a fly? He switched body with a fly. I forgot what that one was called. I'm, I'm trying to think, sure. think, 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 think. It's not Body Snatcher. It was something else. I haven't seen him in any horror movies. More like He's more like sci-fi. The fly. Sci-fi funny. Literally the fly. It's not horror. Is that horror? The fly is the, the horror movie. It's gross, but I, I never considered it a horror movie. It's called Body Horror. Oh, okay. Because the body is like, you know, transformed to this fly looking guy. Mm, okay. All right. So that is a genre of horror, body horror. It, I mean, you watching. could say like Gollum from Lord of the Rings. I mean, the whole concept of Lord of the Rings is not really scary, but he's kind of quite creepy. Yeah, you have Nazgul too, all those. Yeah. Horrors. So it, it, it's not strictly horror, it's <laughs> fantasy. Yeah. So, but the thing is a fly where he switched bodies with a fly or transformed, merged with a fly body, right? It's, it has a horror sense of it. Okay. Right. So Jeff Bloom, he's a very storied actor. Mm -hmm. You see him in a lot of movies. Like I said, the first time I saw him was in Jurassic Park. Was and he born here in California? No, he was no. born in Pennsylvania. Oh, okay. Yeah. So happy birthday to Jeff. Mr. Jeffrey. Jeff. Jeffrey Lynn Goldblum. And yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure you've seen him in the Apartments.com commercials. He's I have oh, Like I said, I don't have to. You know, you know what's funny? Because I'm looking for apartments, right? Before we move in. And uh, I guess unsurprisingly, that's where that's all the ads I start getting at that time when I'm watching YouTube. Yeah, because of uh, your search engine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you type in your search engine uh, that they, they collect the data that you. Mm -hmm. 
All right. Moving on, Ooh. we're going to Kazakhstan. That is the capital city, Nur-Sultan. But we see all these buildings, like life, it's more of a modern take of how they live, right? But when we go back to the more traditional way of living, they live in yurt. Whoa. So they're kind of like, you know, the, the Native Americans of our... The tent, uh, yeah, kind the of? Yeah, the tent, the TP. Or, or igloo. Yeah, igloo, yeah, igloo too. They're more uh, for people who are nomadic. Nomadic people are individuals who will not settle down in one space for too long. They don't have one settlement. They're yeah. continually moving on. Because when you think of like uh, East of Asia, right? It is a vast landscape. Landscape, yes, right. yes. And there is a lot of the, the weather there is very too extreme. Mm -hmm. You have very cold, very hot, and it's something you've got to be on the move. And as you see here, their yurt is like, um, it's held up by wood. Sometimes they use bamboo or other materials to hold it up. And the cloth that's outside that's draped around it, right, is usually felt, animal skin, or stuff that they sew together to create one big canvas. And as you see here, there's wheels on the side. I was so going to say that. So it's, it's kind of like for transport. Yeah, yeah, it's for transport. It's kind of like a, it's kind of like what you call it, RV trailer? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Except that you don't use a car, you use an animal to uh, pull it. Yes, exactly, yeah. You use probably horses. And mm -hmm. these, these uh, steps, the Asian steps, right? Like landscape prairies and wide, as you can see, right? Yeah, you use horse to traverse the landscape. So if you are, if they construct it correctly, right? They can, uh, they have proper ventilation for the hot summer, so you can keep yourself cool. You have good insulation when it's cold, and in the center of the yurt, the little camps uh, camp, right? Mm -hmm. uh, there's a hearth. A hearth is kind of like, a, like a, like the bonfire. The bonfire. Oh, the okay, okay. So it's like a, a place of gathering for uh, the family to cook food, just keep warm. And I can see at the top of it, right? There's a little uh, funnel. It's kind of like your exhaust where yeah. all the gas. Yeah, yeah, like a chimney. Yeah, exactly, a chimney. Thank you. Uh, the smoke will go out that. So, because you, you don't want to really be trapped inside with all that smoke, you oh, probably yeah. suffocate, right? And inside the um, yurt, right? Is even though it's one big compartment, one big room, right? There are divisions in terms of where the male and the female are, mm, in okay. terms of where they are, they're uh, situated in. So the male is more on the right side of the yurt, and the woman is on the left side. Okay. Yeah. So it's the ritualistic, we uh, how you say it, uh, tradition. More like cultural. cultural yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So that is the yurt, and from Kazakhstan. Moving on to. Uh, I guess the only thing that they're missing is the bathroom. But if you're in an open field, it shouldn't be. Your a nature problem. is your bathroom. There you go. That's yeah. why it's called nature calls. You just <laughs> go to nature and you call it. Nature, what's that? I'm hearing the nature calls. Yes, it's go. my. Uh, that that burrito didn't sit it well. <laughs> Gotta go dig. Plant <laughs> of the day. I just yell it out because well, it's in caps lock. It is red cabbage. Well, it doesn't look red cabbage. to me, right? Cabbage. It is kind of it's purple purplish deep purple right it's it's one of those things that people just you know kind of like name it slightly wrong right i know but it's a what we call it misnomer yeah we call that as a misnomer uh it has a little bit of deep violet color right oh hold on yes well, but it's already accepted to call this purple cabbage yeah it's fine yeah, yeah uh -huh. it's not you know like how you have your uh you have different common names, right? Mm -hmm. It's just the scientific name that's more important that it cannot be changed. Yeah, that's right, right. Have you seen a green orange though? Yeah, it's unripe. Yeah. <laughs> Try like, tricking. Come what's, on. What's a green orange? <laughs> you see a blue banana? No. I'll show you guys next week. Really? Yeah. Wow. Okay. So the chemical that gives us this color, right, is anthocyanin, mm -hmm. and this we talk about this for. I think we were talking about Ian, right? We were talking about food. Like, there's different types of cabbages and lettuce, and it's really for specific meat dish meals. So red cabbage, I for me, I probably um, encounter it as something when you need something a little, little crisp to it. Okay. Right. Or if I want to boil something, I can stew, right? I use red cabbage for like deep color. For yeah, if you want to be fancy on the color in your food, yes. And it does have the crispiness. It retains the crispiness to it. So, does it have any significant difference between that and a regular cabbage, like the green one? Besides the color and a little bit of texture too. All right, so right. a little bit of texture. Yeah. So, would you prefer this or regular cabbage? Oh uh, well, again, it depends. If I'm eating salad, then I want a more, I want to have more color Colorful, in my salad. Yeah. So this adds more color. Um, when it comes to stew, I prefer the green one. Really? Yeah. 
Huh. I really, I, I can eat the boiled green cabbage, but I kind of like the red one more. It has more of a crunch to it. Mm. Right. So it's really about preferences. Right, right. right. So moving on to animal of the day. What do we have? We have the red snapper. Oh, oh, you forgot about the theme, but it looks like there's a theme here. You thought I forgot about the theme, huh? Wrong again. What's this? Red snapper. What's snap about the cabbage? No, I'm talking about the red snapper. Oh, okay. I, just, I thought you see the. I thought you thought the theme was snap. I'm like, what? No, 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 that's not snap. <laughs> So red snapper, right? It's one of the more commercially uh, available fish that we use to eat. I like eating red snapper. It's pretty tasty. You can find it like in the Pacific Atlantic. Hey, come on! I think all fish are tasty. No, not really. Really? No. Is that white are... meat or uh, what, what's the flesh of the red snapper? Uh, I think it's a little bit red. Okay. If I remember. I mean, it says red. Oh well, yeah, it's red. But sometimes it, it can be the skin outside is red. You don't know. Yes, and the right. flesh is like white, right? So you have to really think about it, but I'm pretty sure it's red, yeah. Um, I kind of like them because I like them in stew. Like mm -hmm. Good vegetable stew. Uh, grilling them is good. And I love fish, actually. Yeah, fish, I like fish. Fish, I think I prefer... If I can choose between beef, chicken, or fish, I'll probably pick fish. Oh, well. yes, of course, me too. Yeah. I would go fish number one, second uh, would be chicken. I like chicken too, yeah. Fish and chicken, but I like <laughs> fish more. Because I feel like fish has more health benefits mm -hmm. than chicken. They both have proteins, right? But you know, when you think of fish, what do you think of? You think of omega fatty acids. Yeah. Right. So that is the red snapper. Uh, it's kind of like what you call it. When we eat so much of it, I don't think I can have it as a pet. Right? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. Moving on to our day, we have another Vincent Van Gogh. What? And we have red cabbage and onions. Okay, all right. Everything's in caps because I keep it in caps. Mm -hmm. And as you can see, you have onions and red cabbages. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, what, I mean, what else can I say? This here? painting has uh, his typical uh, blue and yellow combination, uh, but, but there's a touch of red this time because for the red cabbage. Right, right. But you see the little <laughs> outing, uh, outing leaf, outer leaf of the red cabbage, a little bit of a bluish green, right? Mm -hmm. It yeah. blends with a little cloth, I guess. So uh, it's kind of more of a reflection of, of the background, I guess? Yeah, I think the light bounces off the, yeah. the, 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 the draping. The background and bounce onto the outer leaf of the cabbage, mm -hmm. and you have blue. You see a little bit of absence of green, right? But there's a little bit of green on the onion to give it a little bit of contour. Yeah, because what is yellow and blue? Yellow and blue is very complementary. And you see that a little bit, a lot of themes for Van Gogh painting. It's a little bit of red. No, but yeah, but if you combine yellow and blue, blue you yeah. get green. So there, that's why there's a little bit of green there too. Oh yeah, so you mix in your mind. Oh wow, mm -hmm. that's good. That's and good then uh, what else? The stroke is very Vincent Van Gogh. Yes, it's very yes. VVG right there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah. You can tell. You know. What you can, can tell say? from the stroke. So what can I say? I, I love his paintings. So that's Vincent Van Gogh. Moving on. 1987. Remember how the red dye number four was banned? Well, they had to come with some ways to, you know, create the red color. As an food. alternative? Yeah. Okay. Alternative, more safe alternative. And we have Allura Red AC. So in food products nowadays, you see a little bit of red color, like food, candies, um, cosmetics. Mm -hmm. They use red, Allura Red AC. So when you look at it, right? It looks like there's a lot of uh, elements. Okay, let's break it down. Now. You know what carbon is, right? Carbon C. Yes. H, what's H? Uh, hydrogen. N. Uh, nitrogen, Na, uh, sodium, very good. O, oxygen, and S. S would be, I'm not sure, but I would go for sulfur. Very good. Okay. Yes. So when you look at the, I almost said silicon. Actually, <laughs> silicon is S off. Yeah, there you go. So when you look at the the rings, right? We call them carbon rings because all those are edges or those are, are where the line join together and turn at an angle, right? That's filled by a carbon. You have your uh, your sulfur is connected, double bonded to two oxygen. You see the two lines right here. You see the two lines attached to each other, I suppose. Mm -hmm. And you have the sodium just hanging out there. Yeah, that's. I was going to ask that. It looks like sodium is not really directly connected to them. It's an ion. Okay. So it has a charge where the positive is attracted to. Kind of goes to, around it? Yeah, it kind of floats in the vicinity. Yeah, in the yeah. area. 
So, wow. but the thing is, like, when you put it in water, right, those two will break out easily. Oh, okay, okay. So when you put it in water, the lower red, right, the whole everything that's attached by a line, right, will stay together, but the sodium will they're bonded, yeah, they're bonded on because they're, they're more weakly bonded. Mm-hmm. So sodium is positively charged, as you can see, it has a plus sign, right? And what is the opposite of positive? Uh, it's negative. And it says usually say opposite of tracks. Yes. So positive and negative, that's why the oxygen is here and then the sodium is over there and they're closely near each other. So a perfect example would be me being positive and you're being negative. Yeah, you can That's that. why we get along together. Yeah. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> so that's lower red AC. So do you know what is that? It has something to do about red. Yeah. Uh, uh, so let me guess, your, your word would be either crimson or velvet. Wow. Or... Wow. Uh, <laughs> you got it. It's, it's crimson. A, it's a pretty straightforward theme. So. S-O-N is a noun or adjective <laughs> of rich and deep color inclining to purple. So the red cabbage is a little bit of purple. So mm -hmm. little bit, I won't say not crimson. It's a more purplish. It's not inclined. It's not leaning But I don't towards. think they use that word crimson as a color, huh? They do use it as a color. They do? Like cause I, I never crimson see... Crimson lipstick. No, no, but yeah, but I never saw crimson as part of the Crayola thing. You know, they would either call it red, red violet, or violet, or then red and stuff like that. I'm pretty right? sure there is. Hmm. I'm sure there is. But I know they use it for like lipstick. So you <laughs> want something that's a little bit of a harsh, not harsh sounding word, but more of a distinctive word. Like crimson red, sunset blue, or sunset orange. Oh, oh I say blue. <laughs> Can you say crimson red, or th does that sound redundant? Because when you say crimson, it's kind of like leaning towards more or inclining to purple, right? But it has you a can, deep can. red color. You can't. It's like a, you can say it's like a variant of a, a color of red. You can say like raw, light red. You can say dark red. So crimson red. You can say crimson, crimson red. Crimson red, yeah. Or orange red. Blood orange. Mm -hmm. You can use it as a way to more, more... What's the word for it? You can make it more specific. There we go. And you can also use it as a verb of a person's face becoming flush, especially through embarrassment. Crimson. So it's kind of like this, you're embarrassed, right? You're, you're, someone, you're blush red. Someone pants you, right? You're in front of all your <laughs> pants. You. Is that even, it's still even a thing right now? <laughs> you want to make it a thing? No. I'll probably get a report to HR again. <laughs> Anyways, you're embarrassed, right? Your face is like rushing full of blood. So, oh, look at it. Jared's crimson red. His face is crimson red. Because you're embarrassed. Because I mm. pull down your pants and your underwear matches your face. It was pink. <laughs> I, that actually happened to me when I was in uh, middle school. Oh, man. One day, my mom washed my red shirt with my tidy whities Oh, and then it faded, huh? It, it became pink. Was it? Did she wash it in like bleach or something? I don't know, but my underwear turned pink, my tidy white turned pink. And that day, I pee some kid pants me, and everyone was like laughing. And he was like, oh my gosh, Joe's wearing pink underwear. Oh. That's actually true. <laughs> and it scarred me to this day. Oh man! Right, so that's why I don't wear underwear anymore. <laughs> what? <laughs> that's worse. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But that didn't really happen, and yeah. Uh, so that is our weeks. So now you guys find out the episode. theme for today is based from uh, Joe's memory. There yes. you go. <laughs> My face is crimson red right now too. Our background is red too. You know. Background's red. There I'm wearing a little bit of red right now. I mean, background on our on our We're box here, by the way, because right here. what you guys are seeing right now is blue. The like majority of the screen is blue. So. Yeah, but I think red and blue goes together really well too. Yeah. Pokemon red and blue. Yeah. Oh, uh, your switch is red and blue. Yes. But that's, that's right. besides the point. Thank you guys for joining us again and enjoy the rest of your day and we'll catch you guys either on Zoom or Monday's episode. On Monday. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Take care. Be safe and clean that earth and everything in caps lock. Bye.